Imagine traveling to the largest sand desert on Earth. An area more than twice the size of my home country Germany. And in the heart of this desert, I wanted to fly and photograph. Action. So here we go, the last part of the trip, the Rupachali desert comes closer and uh, we will be there for about six nights so we need to um, buy a lot of food I guess and uh, we brought a nice shopping bag we just bought it this morning. Yep. Uh, we're trying to get last minute stuff for our trip into the Rupachali. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I found our key holder. Nice. There we go. Some alcohol free beer. Basically, it's mold. I think the operative word is survive. The big problem is we're going to be in the desert for six days, so there's no refrigeration, which means things I would never, ever eat under any circumstance. I'm starting to think we need to bring, like these puppies. This is the good stuff. This is what lets us fly. Really a lot. It's a really, really, really a lot of gas. So all of these are gas. These are emergency water. We should never touch these unless we're in trouble. 260 plus 105, that's 365, plus 80 in the car, 445, plus two propane tanks, and a ton of coal. Yeah, if this goes off, you won't feel a thing. 445 liters of gas right here. Rupachali means as much as the empty quarter. It describes the part of the Arabian Peninsula which is virtually deserted and even today partially unexplored. To get there, we take an endless road straight into the barren landscape. On this route, we stop at all gas stations to keep our canisters full. Horse Gate, that's the name, right? Horses Gate, yes. We are at Horses Gate, one of the last gas stations before the Rupa Khali. Yep. And uh, it's a very interesting place. Uh, it's a little bit a uh, kind of mess, but um, yeah, it's very interesting to see how the people live here and how they handle the environment. Yes. This is how they watch TV. Get an old satellite dish and an L&B. Get a little fan to keep them cool in the sun. Some chicks, they're quite young. Mother well, sitting on an egg. I was hoping we'd find some babies, but... <laughs> 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 
انت كلام كويس اي كويس كله يا يا انت ممتاز هذا ايش؟ هذا جيبر هذا كهرباء كهرباء منظم ما شاء الله تغيير دحين ايوه هذا لازم موجود كهرباء يجي اه تمام So what is this generator for? This is the generator that powers the, the whole facility. The last place on this route is Sheba, where there is an oil facility from Saudi Aramco. In the small town of Shubita, only a hundred k's before, our route leads finally into the desert. So let's go into the famous supermarket of Shibita. Let's go. <laughs> so, if this was Star Wars, we'd be in Mos Eisley right now, you know? Really at the very end of the line. This fine fellow, is him in Yemen? Or this idiot? Yemen. This Yemeni guy, he's running the shop. It looks like it's pretty well stocked for something so far out into the sand. Wow, I'm very impressed. Yeah. I mean, but truthfully, we are really, really just on the very edge of the large dunes. I mean, the Rubel Kali itself is enormous, and it's the largest sand desert, but there's a small portion, and it's not really small, it's enormous, but a small segment of it is where the giant dunes are. And we are right here on the edge of it. The Kadan Trail actually stays along the western side of the giant dunes, and as you go down, there's other trails that go into the Rub usually for drilling and exploration for oil and stuff like that support. So let's get some chocolate. Mm. Man, I'm very impressed. In the middle of nowhere, they have that shop here. Yeah. Well, they got Snickers and Mars bars, Kit Kat. Anything you prefer? Mm. Maybe a Mars. Let's go Mars, man. Very sweet, look at these. They even covered with genuine Shibita sand. No kein beer. Aber klar. Danke. Arabisch beer. Yep, so me and Bastian, we're about to have our celebratory beer, ice cold. Cheers, man. Prost. Prost. Mm. Life is good. Nothing but fear and common sense holding us back now. Exactly. So we're in uh, Shibita. We are. It's the most northern part, just before the border of United Arabian Emirates and Saudi. Yes. And uh, we are about to go to the Kidan Trail. Yes, very Ooh. famous ancient trail. <laughs> Which brings us hopefully to the center of the Europa Khali, to the big stadiums. Yes. That's the plan. So, Shiab, explain us uh, something about the Kidan Trail. Okay, uh, I don't know a lot about it except that it's an ancient trail. Um, a lot of the oil exploration that goes on the Rub al will actually use the Kidan Trail to get further into the Rub. And so we'll be following that. My understanding is there's quite a few people out there right now. So maybe it won't be quite as lonely as we think, but I think it'll be plenty lonely. Uh, it's about 300 kilometers long to the heart of the Rub where the Star Dunes are. And uh, I think hopefully today we'll try to get to the first lake. I think it's called Lake O'Brien, which is about two to 300 kilometers from here. Why it's Lake O'Brien? Probably named after the, the driller that found it, or he named it after himself. All right, yeah. so let's go. All right. The largest oil producer in the world, Saudi Aramco, has built over decades a network of roads in the middle of this desert, which serves the supply of oil wells. <laughs> About this runway, I'm really very grateful because I never ever have traveled so comfortable in a desert. For eight hours and about half the night, we follow these gravel tracks to dare the first flight in the desert the next morning. Done. 
Saudi Aramco has repeatedly constructed wells to supply the all wells with water, and lakes like these are created in the process. What a pity! Poor lake! All your water is gone! However, it also happens that the natural pressure is no longer sufficient to transport the water from the huge reservoirs to the surface. We are already 400 km away from the main road, and as beautiful as the Saudi track is, at some points we leave the track and follow my routes to the large star dunes in the center of the desert. What's going on here? We are in the middle of the largest sand desert on Earth. We are. Another typical day being retired, being out in the middle of the Rubal Kali, famous photographer, perfect weather, no one out here but us. Life's good. It's been an amazing day. We woke up at sunrise in Thabalotan, which is in the center of the Rubal Kali. It was calm and not very cold. We had this amazing flight right by this lake that had dried up. And then uh, we packed up and drove out here cross country, which was a lot of fun. About 40 kilometers, just completely in between the star dunes to the star park, which is where we're at right now. And. Uh, I took a nap and you organized film and then later on we f took off in the afternoon and had possibly one of the best flights I've ever had in my life. It was The sun was setting, it was totally calm, we were able to surf up and down these 700 foot, you know, 250, 300 meter tall dunes. And now we're preparing a chili dinner. So this is the chili. It's very spicy so we're going to use it sparingly. Tomatoes which we've chopped up, and carrots. And we've already got a bunch of peppers and onions uh, grilling. We've got a little fire over there, really beautiful. That's it. Oh, we're drinking beer. Well, as, mo as close to beer as we can get in Saudi Arabia for now. Cheers. Cheers. The up to 200 meter high star dunes of the Rupa Khali they are stationary distributed on a huge sepka plane and are framed again and again by small shifting sand dunes like the Bachans. Scientists assume that these primeval dunes were formed during the Ice Age, when there were significantly higher temperature differences and thus higher wind speeds. To see this with your own eyes is already a huge luck which was granted to only a few people so far. He's here, coming a bit from there. Beautiful. Woo!
Here's our camp and our private dune. Wow! It just doesn't stop! <laughs> Another amazing, amazing day!